Hello and welcome to the video, and now for something completely different. This video is all about using very basic equipment and putting together a beer that is very different at the same time. So after deciding this and making the choice to do a brew in the bag, it occurred to me that this is a great opportunity to use a lot of wheat and rye and masses of hops to create something extreme that will be great for the summer that I would not wish to mash with recirculation ever again, and also skip that super slow sticky sparge. So here is what I'll be using for today's brew. This is known as the Digi Boil. It can be used for sparge water heating, fancy French cooking, or as a brewing system. The choice is yours, but I know what gives me the most fun of these three. A simple pot on your stove will also work, just add a mash bag. The main difference here is that you can set the temperature and let the system handle that side of things. The main difference between this and other brewing systems is that this does not have a pump, and thus has no recirculation. I've added a false bottom to this digipoil in part to make sure the bag does not burn on the bottom, but also much more importantly because I'm going to use a good amount of hops in this one. The false bottom will act as a filter for the bottom tap when transferring at the end. I will now dough in while I explain today's grain bill, which is now shown on screen in percentages underneath the Vysel statistics. You can see that it has a combination of wheat and rye malt to a massive 75% of this grist. The wheat will certainly be in dominance here at 60% but with 15% rye it delivers extra flavour for sure. This is then backed up by Munich malt, carapils and flaked oats. I have used something very similar to this as part of a different recipe so I am very confident that this works very well but the full recipe is not my usual tried and tested one, just to warn you. If your brewing system has recirculation then I would strongly suggest that you do not use it for this mash. I've done it and frankly it was straight from hell. Much easier to do this as a BAB. This type of brewing is more hands on and a lot of fun. All you may need to buy is a mash bag that fits your existing system. I only suggest this as a precaution also, as it will stop all the fine particles from that extra fine grain crush that you will need from messing with your filter system. Yup. Take this as a fair warning. Despite the almost smashed grain crush that I'm using here, I'm not aiming higher than 67% brew house efficiency. I can tell you right now that this worked out just great. Instead of a regular 60 minute mash in and 10 minute mash out, I'm going with 75 minutes in total of just mash in. There really is no need for mash out as we will not be sparging this grain. And trust me, this is really doing this mix a favour as it simply would be the sparge from the depths of evil hell with all of this wheat and rye combined. A brew like this is pretty simple. Many Biab brewers stir over 15 minutes for three to five minutes at a time. And I am doing the same here. Some will do absolutely no stirring and take the efficiency here. Up to you of course, but your numbers are going to be quite far down to the 68% that I'm looking to hit here. There are definitely some very different stirring techniques involved in this, so let's go through what they are. Firstly, you can see me here moving up and down to break up the grain. Do this when you feel that the grain is compacted together. This is common at the start of the mash. Other than this, there are these sweeping movements that you see here coupled with regular stirring. It's all very simple stuff. This is all done by feel essentially to stop the grain clumping together on the bottom as much as you can. This is all about choices though. Naturally grain is cheap so follow your own path here. There's simply no right or wrong way. Once you know your efficiency then you can dial in your recipes accordingly. That's the important thing here. After you have finished your mash then you can remove the bag. Feel free to squeeze the bag afterwards to remove as much of your wort as you comfortably can. I've no idea where the rumour came that this is a bad thing. It simply is not. I tend to squeeze and drain over the brewing system first and then place it into a bucket to squeeze a little bit more out. This is then poured back into the brewing system during the heat up to the boil. As you can imagine with such a protein rich grain bill there was a lot of protein on top that I stirred in before officially starting the boil timer of 30 minutes. Some brewers, as a pure decision of taste, would opt to remove some or all of this protein rich foam. Personally, I prefer beer with it in, but I would suggest that you try both ways using a brew of the same recipe twice for comparison. The hop schedule, as shown on the right hand side of the screen now, is one that I've used in various shapes and forms before. It is based on the simply genius continuous hopping technique from Dogfish Head Brewery in the US. Kudos to you guys. 
The two main hops used here are Centennial and East Kent Goldings, which are both favourites of mine and they work super well together. So like the grain bill, I have confidence based on past experience. I've never brewed this recipe as a whole before, so I'm simply putting together parts that I know work in a different combination, and again through experience I simply feel very confident that this will work very nicely. As you can see from the schedule, this is just a 30 minute boil in total with hop additions given every 5 minutes. I used an immersion chiller to cool this one down, starting with adding it during the boil to sanitise it, and I then chilled things down to 75C or 167 degrees Fahrenheit. I then added in the last tops with the cooling spiral removed so that I could give them a proper stir in in preparation for the hop stand of 20 minutes. After this and cooling the wort further, I lifted the brewing system up onto a bench and let gravity transfer the wort from the system into my fermenter. I didn't splash this in for a change as Lollamon do not recommend this when pitching from the sachet. I had preset my spunding valve to 12 psi and then set up my temperature controller to 35 degrees C or the equivalent of 95 degrees Fahrenheit. By the next day my final gravity was reached and this remained constant for the whole week. I have to say that this Lelleman Voskveig isolate never fails to impress me. It works very well under pressure or with no pressure at all. Like when using Orkveig I used a triple serving of yeast nutrient and things worked out very well. Here is an early look at the end result. After tasting this beer very recently, I have to say that I am delighted in how this turned out. It also looks very much in keeping with its name too. Make no mistake that it is not very tried and tested as a pairing of this grain bill and the hop schedule, but as a first attempt I am very happy with how it turned out. So let's now run through how this stacks up. The aroma on this particular beer is pretty complex stuff. The main aroma is certainly citrus from the Centennial hops, but this is followed by notes from the wheat and rye. There are also some earthy, piney and floral notes also. In terms of flavour, this is very clean with a good level of citrus flavouring as you would expect. Pineapple, orange and pear on the tongue to start with a nice dry finish, with the unmistakable taste of rye and wheat that finishes the flavour very nicely. This is actually much more easy drinking than I expected because of the grain bill. It is certainly lighter than I imagined it would be. If anything, it is well-rounded and moorish. The finish is dry, but the overall impression in the mouth afterwards is juicy, a quality that I really enjoy. For a first try combination, I am very happy with this. I am going to continue tasting this, yes, the things I do for science before I decided if changes are actually needed. Why not brew it yourself and make your own decisions too? Let me know your thoughts after brewing this if you have any. I brewed a full batch of this as I was very confident that it would work, but if you wish then you could simply make a small batch on your stove. And of course remember to do this as just a brew in the bag no matter how big or small you decide to brew this. If you are feeling social then consider joining this YouTube channel's Facebook group. Links are shown on screen now for your added convenience. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate then please like this video on YouTube and if you have not done so already then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!